Welcome to UC Today with me, David Dungay. I have today with me another David, David Reynolds, MD of Zillion uh, in the UK. Uh, Dave, welcome to the show. How are you today? Yeah, great. Thanks, David. Uh, it's a sunny day in August and uh, everyone's out and uh, doing stuff. So it's a really exciting time and uh, really busy in the channel as well. So, uh, yeah, really great. Thanks. Brilliant. Well, I'm really looking forward to getting into our channel conversation today. Um, We're going to be talking about um, partners and selling into the SME space particularly. But before we get into that, um, do you want to give our viewers a bit of an introduction to yourself and uh, Zillion? Yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, Dave Reynolds and the MD and uh, run the UK and Irish part of Zillion. We're a cloud hosted voice vendor. We develop and run a hosted voice platform supporting customers across Europe uh, and uh, so exclusively through our channel partners. Um, It's an open platform allowing partners to sort of build their own proposition rather than a finished uh, closed environment where you buy for X, sell for Y. Excellent. So uh, a, a channel organization, which is which is great. It's what I like to hear. Um, obviously, most of your partners, they sell into the, the SME space. So I, I wanted to talk about the SME space and some of the dynamics going on there. So, uh, I mean, what, what do you feel that space is looking for in terms of its communications now in this? We're kind of getting into that post pandemic era, aren't we? But w- what are they really after? I, I think... We, we do a lot of uh, web demos with our partners and their potential clients and existing clients that are looking to transition uh, to something else. And I think some of the biggest change, I think some of the biggest drivers they have right now is they are a lot, a lot of SME businesses sort of panic bought a lot of services in the first part of, of last year's pandemic. Um, as an example, they might have jumped onto the, uh, bought a load of Zoom licenses and a load of GoToMeet licenses. And, you know, they, they acquired a lot of cloud services uh, in, in a very short period of time without too much strategic for. It's just buying stuff that they know they, that, that enabled them just to carry on. And a lot of it was purchased without any sort of long term strategy. So when we talk to these SME customers now with the partners, a lot of them are really trying to rationalize down uh, and, and sort of decide, actually, what are we going to be, what, what are we going to do for the next three or four years? We sort of know now how, how we're going to be operating. We know we're going to have to support a lot more flexible working and things like that. Um, and it's what products do we need to enable that to happen for the next, you know, three, four years. I think that's where most SME customers are. I think everyone's really comfortable uh with the remote working environments and flexi working and the reality of sort of that uh, 70, 30, 80, 20 split office home working environment, which I think is going to be the norm for the SME sector. Um, and I think they're just trying to rationalize and, and get support from the research, from their partner and supplier, our resellers uh, to get the best strategy together to enable their business to operate. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, in if we look back at that early part of 2020, you know, as you say, it was um, it was just go time, wasn't it? People just had to get home, they had to get remote, and they they did whatever they need to. I mean, and a lot of people, you know, Zoom and the the Teams um, aspect, it was it was easy to do at the time, but may not be best fit long term. You know, is I mean, is the channel still you know going to be relevant for these people? In in this period now, who who can you know buying some Zoom licenses is a it's not really a, a complex kind of uh, deal if you like. Um, is, I mean, are the channel partners really going to be still relevant for a lot of those SME customers that might have been buying, you know, straight straight out of Zoom or straight out of Microsoft. Sure, I, th- I think the answer is yeah, one hundred percent yes. So if you look at the, the 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 three core market sectors, you've got that Soho. You know those 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 uh, one man band really tiny businesses, micro businesses, the SME section, the enterprise, and if you look at like British Telecom, Microsoft is a great example in the UK. They are they are great at serving that Soho and that huge enterprise market. That is their speciality, and the channel was always exist. The channel exists because the SME sector is served poorly by those organisations. And it, the, the SME sector is reliant on not just a supplier. A supplier isn't someone that they just buy from. A supplier is someone that, that 
takes care of them, helps them set up their services, maintains their services for them. Um, and, that, and that's why the channel exists. The channel didn't exist because someone decided that we should have a load of resellers. It, it exists because SME businesses need that higher level of support and guidance that the really big telcos and the likes of Microsoft just can't cater to. Um, it's, it's So I think the channel is as relevant as ever and the channel partners and resellers that really adopt and sort of skill up in these services are going to be the real long-term winners. Okay, great. So I want to talk about contracts as well. In our personal lives, uh, I think most of us subscribe to, you know, this, that, and everything uh, from Netflix to Spotify to whatever else. We're used to that, that sort of subscription economy. Are we, are we seeing those, those longer-term contracts now come down in, the, in this space as well? And you know, what, what are customers' expectations around contract lengths and how is that going to impact channel partners? Yeah, I, so if you, if you look at, I suppose, the, when Host of Voice really sort of emerged, so Host of Voice has been around now, I don't know, 10, 15 years in some, in some form or another, but in almost all instances up until last year, it was sold uh, with some bundled equipment on a three-year contract or a five-year contract. That, that, if you looked at any RSA competitors, what any reseller is selling, that was probably the go-to. And, I, I, and it would be very rare for a service to be sold on less than a three-year contract. Um, and that was driven because that was what people did on in telco world, in the digital telecoms world, in PBXs, they were all leased and financed over extended periods of time. But also because you had to finance a lot of equipment. If you were going to go and sell a 50 seat hosted voice deal and you had to bundle in 50 handsets at 100 quid a pop well you, you'd finance that over three years and then it doesn't feel like it's too expensive to the end customer and it worked really well financially and they were buying it like a mobile deal we're now in a scenario where handsets are going to be much less prevalent so currently less than 50 percent of new zelion customers uh, users have a desk phone uh, and we expect that number to continue to decline and they're going to move to headsets and things like that. So the, the requirement to bundle and finance equipment on a contract is is, is going to reduce. Um, and I think customers and SME businesses, as they buy online services, like you, you mentioned Zoom's a prime example, or you know what we buy in our own lives, like Spotify and things like that, they're expecting contract terms to drop. And I, and I we already support that with 12-month contracts. So all our partners buy off us on 12-month agreements. Most of our partners to date sell out on a three-year deal, but we're start, starting to see the the end customers push back on that and say, actually, we don't we don't know where we're going to be in two years. We don't know where we're going to be in a year. We need something much more flexible, much more shorter term. And the resellers, I think, they see that as, oh, you know, I, I want the guaranteed revenue. And of course, that's what we all want, but. In fact, if we really listen to the SME cust our customers, those SME customers, and support what they're asking for, I think you protect that revenue anyway. Um, so we're going to see a lot more of that. We're going to see a lot more shorter-term contracts, and we're going to get a lot more pushback from end customers for that. And that will be driven by other products they buy, like Microsoft 365, which is on a 12-month agreement, Zoom, GoToMeet, and all these other tools that they're going to start to they start to use. You know. Um, zero and in all other sectors i think we're going to get pushed for that as well so i i would say to resellers be prepared for that now start looking at how you would tailor your products and your financials of your products to support short-term contracts and how you would deal with that yeah i mean from a from a customer experience or customer support angle you know a lot of resellers they're going to be they're going to be upping their game you know if you're on, on a 12-month contract that's um that's that's going to be something you're going to, have, a lot of them are going to have to be quite hot on going forwards, no? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, I've, I've I haven't always worked a channel. I've, I've I've been in the channel and left and gone into working direct in in telecom sales and and support and service. And absolutely, when you when you got someone on a five year contract, the customer service element it, it sort of dwindles sometimes because that customer's tied in such long term that people don't think about them the same as someone who might be. 18 months left on a contract or 12 months left on a contract. So if your if your customers are starting to come in on lower short contracts, you're going to have to up your game and you're going to have to look after them better. But we're in a much better place to do that because 
it's no longer the job of a road warrior to drive around the country, touring the country, visiting customers to make sure they're all happy. It's so much easier today to do 20 minutes on a quick Zoom call and maybe just visit them once or twice a year and do everything else like, over the phone or over a video call. And because it's cloud, you don't need to visit to make changes. So I don't think there's any reason why you can't give great support at, very, at little to no extra cost, um, except for your own principles and working practices. And we really push our partners hard to make sure that they take care of the customers, not take them for granted. Because the last thing you want to do is, and, and I'm sure it happens to most resellers at some point, is the customer that you think is your 10-year you know, customer ends their term and, and leaves. And, and it's a complete shock. And, it, and what, you, what you've got to think is that resellers need to always understand that all their customers are always being approached by their competitors. And what's going to keep that customer is keeping them as happy as you can and, and for us it's all about integration if uh, we really want to push hard to our resellers that when they take the Zalion service you need to plug that into as many of their internal operations as possible you don't want just the staff to like it you want it to connect into 365 you want it to connect into teams you want it to synchronize with their, their address book system their calendars and as many other applications as you can in that organization so that if they do ever consider uh, looking at an alternative product the first thing they've got to do is make this huge list of things that this new product's got to do out the box and if it doesn't well you're in a you're in a great position uh, so we're really trying to push hard on our partners to deliver those uh, those elements yeah. Well, as we're on integrations, let's um, let's talk about uh, sort of the in the big integration that everyone's talking about in the market, and that is uh, integration with uh, with Teams. Uh, I think just about everyone uh, in our space has uh, got some sort of road into into Microsoft Teams uh, to provide that voice element. What are, what are your experiences at the moment with with those integrations uh, with with the SME sector specifically? Um, you know, what what are you seeing? Yeah, so, so Teams has obviously been a real disruptor in the market, and it's it, you know, and you, you've got to be naive to think it's not going to have an impact on, on how customers work. You know, Microsoft are in a great position. It's on the desktop when you install, you, you know, your computer, get, your new laptop comes, you switch it on, and there's Teams. Uh, it's already there, um, and they bundle it f- free within three six five. So everyone's got Teams, but. I think for the SME sector, it's had less impact than th- people think. So in the enterprise market, if you're running a company with 3,000 employees in six countries, uh, Teams is a great tool. Uh, you know, you can use it for so, there's so many things it can do. But SME businesses don't scratch the surface of Teams, really. It, to them, they see it as a chat client and something that I do video calls with customers on. Um, mm-hmm. The direct routing element is it's okay uh we sell direct routing so you can connect uh your teams client to zelion and make make your use uh, teams as your soft phone uh and that works okay and we've got some customers that buy that and they quite like that uh but we've also had to rescue customers that have sort of delved into that and it's not working out for them very well because of the limitations of the teams client and they have to cut they have to roll back to something else so we've had to do a lot on that as well but i think what we've really looked at and what we've our sort of path here is we've built a fantastic teams widget so not many people know that within teams there's actually it has a teams app store so you can install apps within the teams environment and we built a new app uh, which goes live in september that does that and what that app does it gives you the feel of complete integration between your Zelion communication platform and Teams in terms of address book searching, uh, having a dialer within Teams and initiating phone calls through Teams, but without having to commit to that direct routing, which means they don't have the additional license cost of Microsoft or um, integration costs and call costs, um, and but they get the whole look and feel of it. And it, it does that one element that everyone asks for and everyone's been asking for for two years which is when you go on a video call on teams i want my phone system to say i'm on a phone call so uh, and we've delivered that with our widget so it's really great so if you've got someone sitting at a desk with a desk phone with a busy lamp field keyed watching somebody else and that person goes on a zoom call uh, a teams call sorry uh, their light will flick red and same on the soft phone or the mobile apps it's unified across all those devices 
And we think that's a much better fit for the SME sector because if you're a engineering company with 20 staff, uh, you know, do you want to go? Are you expecting to all, all of a sudden just use Teams for, as their phone? No. So you need to consider your clients and the type of clients you sell to. And the SME sector, I think, is the least, diet routine is the least relevant for. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was going to ask, you know, how, how many, uh, that, that price element, how many of your um, your 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 end customers, like if your partner's end customers, if you like, uh, get quite hung up on that cost element? Because it's not, it's not necessarily a cheap option to go down the DR route um, if you're not using all of that sort of functionality. Yeah, I, I think the cost implication is, is most affecting on the SME sector. Um, and uh, there's real questions about how do you set it up? You have to be, you know, we've built tools to make it as easy as possible, but uh, not everyone's done that. So you have to, some some of our competitors, you've got to be a real PowerShell wizard to even set the thing up. Uh, there's debates about if you went do direct routing directly from Microsoft, would you port your numbers to Microsoft? Are you ever going to be able to get them back? Uh, there's lots of uh, question marks uh, beyond just the cost, because I think cost at the end of the day, Microsoft at some point, I'm sure, will reduce the cost because when they, when they, when they, when the peak stops and their sales, you know, their sales curve starts to tail off, how do how do they get that ta- that tail going back up? Well, let's reduce the cost to open more direct routing up to SMEs. So I, I expect uh, that six pound a month phone system license to reduce at some point. Excellent. Okay. Well, look, Dave, um, the, the, the big launch, uh, you know, Zellion 8 is almost upon us. You know, this September, it's uh, going to be sort of available for your, for your partners. Um, you know, take us through how Zellion 8 is, ta- is, is addressing some of these challenges. You've spoken about your team's widget and the, and the, the sort of the, the integration there. Well, you know, how, what else is coming from uh, Zellion 8? Yeah, so we've so we actually, Zellion 8 development, has been ongoing for since we launched Zellion 7. Uh, and whilst we've had about 50 updates to Zellion 7 over the last four years, uh, the Zellion 8 roadmap started almost straight away. And we simply, first of all, we, we take all the feedback we can. So as all of our partners know, we, we have a pretty robust feature request program where partners and customers can submit what they want they get reviewed weekly and then they get rolled into the roadmap if there's something we, we decide to do. And um, we, we developed video uh, maybe eight years ago and it was never something that was that important. And most partners didn't know that if you actually plugged in a video handset into our system, it just worked uh, natively. Um, but we never created a video conferencing solution because there was there was just no demand for it. So obviously with the pandemic, that was a, that was a huge element. And whilst we, we're unsure whether people really will use our video conferencing that we're going to deliver in our next release, we are putting it in a standard for all our customers. They won't have to pay any extra for it. It will come with their standard user license. So whether they continue to use Zoom or um, GoToMe or Teams or whatever, or whether they decide to adopt Zellion's video conferencing, we, we're unclear on that. But one of the key elements we've focused on is delivering a really robust video conferencing solution. And we've focused on the guest element. So no downloads, no registration, just straight through the browser for a non-Zellion user. But I think what, what we really, really looked at hard in Zellion 8 is app usage. So we already had a really robust soft phone in Zellion 7, truly battle proven. You know, we didn't get huge spikes in customer support inquiries when everyone started working from home because our apps were already out there and people were quite comfortable with them. What we've really looked at with Zellion 8 is what can we do with those apps to make them even better in a market where we know 50% of users are going to use the soft phone. So we've stripped back a lot of the things that people didn't use, and we've really focused on the elements that they do use a lot. So um, our new apps on Windows will be on the Windows Store rather than an executable download. So that means it's much easier for customers and uh, IT people within a business to deploy because they can do group policy deployment. It means we can push our updates out through the Windows Store, which means it's much cleaner and easier for customers to get the updates as and when we push them out. It also allows us to do updates much, much quicker. And um, we've really made it as simple as possible so that someone can download our app 
and within two minutes they're logged into the hunt groups they need to be logged into and they can make and receive phone calls and they can chat and they can video and they can integrate with other services uh, we've demoed to yourself the whatsapp integrator in the past that is a key part of our strategy for 2022 will be around the whatsapp integration and web chat client integration uh, which we've already started this you know the path off in may last year excellent so i mean a, a year of integrations and simplicity which is which is fantastic and something i think we've all got a little bit used to over the last 18 months particularly with uh, you know the remote working uh, <laughs> revolution if you like um so dave i mean look, looking forwards uh, we're in a it feels like we're in a hybrid world now it's here um, what what are your expectations from you know the hybrid working environment at, at SME level over the the next year or so, and uh, you, the channel's ability to keep up with those demands? Yeah, I, I, th- I think customers will adopt this stuff extremely. Well, they already have the SME. The SME sector has more hosted voice users than any other sector as a ratio, right? It the, the, you know we don't when we look at new customers joining Zellion for our partners. It, they're not coming off ISDN and they're not coming off analog. Most of our customers are second or third generation hosted voice customers. Now, that doesn't mean they're all app driven guy, you know, companies and things like that. Most of them probably were still using the desk phone with their previous product. And some of them will use desk phones with us, uh, you know, going forward. But in the, so the SME sector, I say, has already adopted most of this and doesn't, the transition is pretty easy for them. And that's because they're smaller, they're agile, they have less challenges over, a, you know, a multinational organization. I think the real challenge is the resellers. They they really have to um, become extremely agile uh, and, and really adopt this themselves. You know, I see sometimes, you know, we all go on LinkedIn and sometimes I'll see a LinkedIn post from a reseller uh, talking about, you know, you just can't beat a desk phone and, you know, the desk phone's king and things like that. And I, and I think mm-hmm. whilst there is still a place for that, I think uh, I think that those days are well and truly over for a lot of people. And I think the resellers that really adopt, not just reselling these services, but adopt them and live and breathe them will be best placed. And if you look at a telecoms reseller, when I first got into the channel, when I worked at Griffin, you know, it's a long time ago now, a, t- a, a telco reseller might have sold four or five different manufacturers of PBXs and they were skilled to a really good level in all of them, maybe 75% of the way. And at last 25% of the skill set, they were reliant on the, the vendor to help deliver or the distributor. In the hosted voice world, it's the opposite of that. You can't be a jack of all trades. You can't sell five or six vendors and be fantastic at them all. And most of our partners actually only sell us and one other. Uh, it's rare to find someone that just sold themselves one hosted voice product. So I think resellers need, really need to take their time, pick great products and really master them and become the absolute you know, masters of their service so that when they deliver that to a customer, the customer experience is excellent. The customer has a really great experience throughout the contract and is well looked after. And I think if the resellers just really focus on that, just being absolute experts in what they do and, and, and less concentrating about um, some of the other elements and just focus on great customer services, great product knowledge. Um, I think it will really set them up well to serve, you know, the SME sector for the next 10 years as, as everyone transitions to the cloud. Great. Well, look, Dave, I think um, what a great place to, to end today's conversation. Thank you so much for joining me. No, thanks, David. It was really great. And uh, looking forward to meeting you face to face at some point. <laughs> And thank you for watching. You've been watching me, David Dungate, on UC Today. If you liked today's discussion, please give us a like or a share on social media. That's it from me. I'll see you next time.